Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh! SpongeBob SquarePants. Where do I even start? SpongeBob is a cultural phenomenon that swept the world by storm. The show was created by marine science educator Steven Hillenburg, and when it premiered on May 1st, 1999, an icon was born. Not too long after its premiere, it quickly jumped in popularity, and soon SpongeBob SquarePants would become a household name. It's the show responsible for breathing new life into merchandise for Nickelodeon, as before SpongeBob, merch from Nick cartoons was actually pretty scarce. To quote popular YouTube channel defunct land, Nickelodeon was supposed to appear as a network run by kids for kids. Pumping out merch for their shows would seem counterintuitive to that goal. However, Spongebob completely changed that. It doesn't matter how old you are or young you are, odds are you've at least heard of Spongebob Squarepants at one point or another. Having been on the air for 22 years at this point, the show has definitely had its ups and downs. It's no secret that after the first Spongebob Squarepants movie, the show seemed to have lost some of its charm, mainly due to departure of creator Steven Hillenburg as showrunner. But that's not to say that the show didn't have its glory days, which is why today we are looking at five iconic iconic episodes of Spongebob Squarepants. A few quick disclaimers, this isn't the top five most iconic episodes, it's just five iconic episodes. I personally find it impossible to rank these episodes by most iconic. It was hard enough for me just to pick five episodes to cram into this video, let alone consider putting them in order. Also, I will be making a sequel to this video in the future, so let me know in the comments down below what episodes you think should be included. And as a side note, I totally understand that due to the nature of my channel being that I usually cover older cartoons, that this video might not be your cup of tea per se, but but that's just fine. I try to cover a wide variety of cartoons in my content, and honestly, not covering Spongebob, I feel would be doing myself a disservice. I was five when Spongebob premiered. I grew up watching it, and for most of my childhood, it was my all-time favorite TV show. Though it may not be your favorite show, it had a huge impact on my childhood, and that's why I chose to make this video. Regardless, thank you for clicking on this video. If you end up enjoying it, click that like button and subscribe for more videos like this one, and with that being being said, let's take a nostalgic walk down memory lane together. Pizza Delivery This episode from Season 1 begins at the Krusty Krab, with the crew closing down the restaurant for the night, when the phone rings. I got it! I got it! Coming! Hello? Bye. Squidward answers and explains that they're closed when Mr. Krabs walks up and takes the phone from him and takes the order. If you've ever worked in retail or fast food, you know it's the worst when someone walks in at one minute before you close or orders right when you're trying to close down. In this case, they're already closed, but Mr. Krabs takes the order anyway for this guy calling a burger place asking to order a pizza of all things. They don't offer pizza, and they also don't deliver, but Mr. Krabs being a greedy asshole isn't going to let that stop him from making a buck. He slaps some patties into the shape of a pizza and orders Squidward to deliver the pizza. Can't you just get SpongeBob to do it? Great idea! Take him with you. And just like that, they're off into the night to deliver the first ever Krusty Krab pizza. Squidward refuses to drive and leaves it up to SpongeBob, who, as we all know, has no idea how to drive. Of course, he puts it right in reverse and floors it. Pack it up! They back up until the boat runs out of gas, and they end up stranded in the middle of nowhere. They decide they're going to deliver the pizza on foot, and the hijinks begin. First, Spongebob listens to the ground, and hears a 16-wheel semi-truck coming, so he decides to hitchhike just like the pioneers did. After Spongebob narrowly avoids getting turned into a sponge pancake, they end up getting sucked into a tornado that spits them out even further away from society than they already were. They keep on walking, and Spongebob keeps them entertained by singing a few songs. Rusty Cray! But after hours of non-stop walking, they end up exhausted and starving. With nothing to eat but the pizza, Squidward tries to convince Spongebob that they should just eat it. Sure 
is a fine looking pizza. SpongeBob refuses to let Squidward have the pizza, so they end up fighting for it, but at the last second, SpongeBob spies the one thing out in nature that can save them from this situation a boulder. It's not just a boulder, it's a rock. Apparently, the pioneers used to ride these babies for miles. SpongeBob may not be able to drive a boat, but surprisingly, he can drive a rock perfectly. He safely drives them to the customer's house on this rock, and when they get there, after all this time, SpongeBob excitedly rings the doorbell to deliver this guy's pizza, just for him to get over the top angry and throw the pizza back at SpongeBob, all because they forgot the drink that he didn't order. My drink? My diet Dr. Kelp? Don't tell me you forgot my drink! But you didn't order any- This guy screamed at Spongebob and slammed the door right in his face, which causes Spongebob to go back to the rock and cry his eyes out. And for the first time in the series, we see Squidward stick up for Spongebob. He goes right up to that guy's door and slams the pizza right in his face. And even more good news. <laughs> we have just enough time to make it back to work! Work? Oh, my aching tentacles. Rock Bottom This episode was one of the more bizarre episodes from season 1. It begins with Spongebob and Patrick having just had an amazing afternoon at a theme park called Glove World. They get on the bus to go home, but unfortunately when it's too late to get off, they realize that they're on the wrong bus. Hey, Spongebob? Yeah, Patrick? Where's leaving Bikini Bottom? They end up on a rapid ride down a 90 degree incline. Next thing they know, they are kicked off the bus in the strange and foreign land of Rock Bottom, where everything is different. The language is different, the bathroom signs are different, even the soil is different. Would you mind putting me down? <laughs> even the fish down there are different from the ones they're used to seeing up in Bikini Bottom. Scared and lost in this dark town, Spongebob tells Patrick to wait for the bus and call him if it comes while he goes to get a bus schedule. Hey Spongebob, the bus is here! <laughs> of course Patrick doesn't call Spongebob until he's actually on the bus, leaving Spongebob stranded alone in Rock Bottom. Spongebob tries his best to run up the 90 degree incline, but it doesn't work. I guess Grandpa Squarepants was right. Don't run for a bus. Especially one that's going up at a 90 degree angle. SpongeBob waits for the next bus to come, but of course he can't catch a break. The bus keeps running by without stopping for him. SpongeBob meets a fish who got off the bus and asks for help, but he just runs off to catch SpongeBob's balloon that blew away on him. Like, five different buses go by, and SpongeBob still isn't able to catch one. After missing even more buses, Spongebob finally gets fed up with it and goes over to the bus depot with hopes of finally getting out of rock bottom, but there is an extremely long line of gigantic fish which leaves him right about number 329 in line. Some time passes and Spongebob falls asleep while waiting in line. Finally his turn comes and he finally gets to ask when the next bus to Bikini Bottom leaves. Uh, next bus to Bikini Bottom. Oh, why didn't you say so? Next bus leaves in five seconds. SpongeBob gets angry and demands a bus to Bikini Bottom, but the guy running the depot leaves for the night and shuts off all the lights. This isn't your average everyday darkness. This is advanced darkness. SpongeBob starts panicking when he hears the sounds of someone nearby making that farting noise that all the residents of Rock Bottom make, so he runs away. But it turns out that it was just the fish that he met that ran after his balloon. The fish has the bright idea to tie the balloon to SpongeBob's wrist and blow up the balloon until SpongeBob floats up to the top of the cliff and back to Bikini Bottom. Safe at last, the balloon carries SpongeBob all the way back to his home. Don't worry SpongeBob, I'm coming back for you! One Crab's Trash I 
almost didn't include this episode because I had another one in mind, however, I realized that other episode would work better for a different video I have planned later on down the line, so this one made the cut instead. This season 3 episode begins with Mr. Krabs setting up a yard sale. Instead of selling his own belongings, he dumps out his neighbor's garbage cans and decides to sell their garbage instead. It belonged to a queen. Ten bucks. Ten bucks? It's full of holes. It was the Queen of Switzerland. SpongeBob and Patrick come by, and Mr. Krabs sells Patrick the toilet plunger that he threw away yesterday, claiming it's a 17th century soup ladle, and he sells SpongeBob one of those soda drinking hats with the number one embroidered on it. Right after they leave, a group of people shows up to bid on the exact hat that SpongeBob bought, which turns out to be a rare novelty. One guy even offers Mr. Krabs a million dollars for it, which causes him to absolutely lose his mind and go running after SpongeBob to get his hat back. Mr. Krabs finds him and tries to convince SpongeBob Bob to let him have the hat. That hat makes you look like a girl. Am I a pretty girl? Oh, well, um, you're, you're beautiful. Uh. SpongeBob feels an emotional connection with the hat and refuses to give it back to him. Mr. Krabs even tries getting other novelty hats and offers them to him, but SpongeBob still won't budge. Foxy Grandpa! Mr. Krabs, feeling left with no other options, decides that he's going to scare the hat off of him. He shows up at SpongeBob's house in the middle of the night in a last ditch effort to get SpongeBob to relinquish the hat. Oh my gosh! A floating shopping list! Ah! I'm not a shopping list! I'm a ghost! Mr. Krabs, under the ruse of a ghost, explains that the hat he possesses is cursed and has to be returned to its rightful owner. Uh, Smitty Wurban Jägerman Jensen! He must have been number one! Next thing he knows, SpongeBob appears behind him, seemingly having just buried the hat in Smitty Wurban Jägerman Jensen's grave. Mr. Krabs ends up going all the way down to Floater Cemetery to dig up the grave and get the hat back. Mr. Krabs has to search the whole cemetery to try to find the right grave, even stumbling upon Squidward's hope and dreams while he's looking. Eventually, he finds Smitty Werben Jägerman Jensen's grave and straight up defiles it to get back his million dollar hat. Just then, lightning strikes and the dead rise to take back the hat. Oh no! I've seen this on the late show! You foolish fiends hold me down and take turns nibbling on my innards! Then you eat my brain and leave my body for the buzzards! That's disgusting. We just want the hat back. Next, we see Mr. Krabs straight up desecrate an entire cemetery full of dead bodies and leave with the rare soda drink hat. He goes back home and finds the group of people still standing outside of his house for some reason, and he claims that they're going to start the bidding at one million dollars, and they all just straight up laugh right in his face. Turns out they found a whole warehouse full of those hats, and they're completely worthless. SpongeBob, on the other hand, stumbled upon a billion dollar hat. Well, that's a spirit breaker. <laughs> what a baby. <laughs> Graveyard Shift This season 2 episode was possibly my favorite favorite of all episodes when I was a child. It begins with Squidward excitedly flipping the open sign to closed right at 8 o'clock. Right when he flips the sign, a guy comes up trying to order at the door after they're closed. When Squidward tries to turn him away, Mr. Krabs catches a whiff of the word money, which he cannot pass up. Mr. Krabs completely throws all labor laws right out the window and tells his only two employees that the Krusty Krab is now open 24 hours. See you in the morning, boys! I can't hang out here all night! I got a light. SpongeBob is stoked about the idea of getting to never stop working. Squidward, on the other hand, is pissed. SpongeBob excitedly flies back to the kitchen to work, and Squidward begrudgingly trudges back to the cash register to get back to work. Here, please hit me as hard as you can. Psst. Squidward, I'm working in the kitchen. <laughs> At night. Don't hold back. SpongeBob has the time of his life doing his job at night. He chops lettuce at night. He swabs the bathroom at night. Ow! I burned my hand! At night. Squidward gets burned out on hearing SpongeBob's excitement, and he asks him to give him a moment of peace and take out the trash. SpongeBob jumps to it enthusiastically, but that's when his excitement jumps to a grinding halt. SpongeBob is terrified of the dark, and the idea of taking out the trash at night causes him to panic. <laughs> 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 
Squidward takes this as the perfect opportunity to mess with SpongeBob. He makes up a scary story about the old fried cook at the Krusty Krab. You mean you've never heard the story of the hash slinging slasher? The slash bringing hasher? He tells SpongeBob that he cut off his own hand on accident and he replaced it with a rusty spatula. Then he got hit by a bus and at his funeral, they fired him. Now, every Tuesday night, his ghost returns to the Krusty Krab to seek vengeance. He tells of three signs to look out for. The lights will flicker on and off. The phone will ring and there will be nobody there. And finally, the hash slinging slasher arrives on the ghost of the bus that ran him over. Are you sure you want to know? What? What? What did they do? He gets you. <laughs> SpongeBob screams for about a minute straight, then Squidward tells him that he was just kidding. Some time passes, and eventually, Squidward starts to get paranoid when weird things start happening. The lights start to flicker on and off, just like in the story. Then, of course, the phone rings, and no one is there. Squidward starts to panic more as he recalls the three signs of the hash slinging slasher. Next, a bus appears outside at 3 a.m., and a mysterious figure steps off the bus. <laughs> SpongeBob starts to sob as he cries tears of joy. He explains to Squidward that he is so touched that Squidward go through all this trouble of dressing up as a ghostly fry cook and standing outside just to entertain him. You must really like me. SpongeBob, there are two problems with your theory. One, I hate you. And two, how can that be me when I'm standing right here? The hash slinging slasher approaches and taps the door with his ghostly spatula hand. Then, as Squidward and SpongeBob are panicking for their lives, he comes in and approaches them. As he steps into the light, we realize that he isn't actually a ghostly fry cook, but is really just a regular guy hoping to grab a job application. He called earlier, but he was nervous, so he hung up. But one thing is left unexplained. And who was flickering the lights? Nosferatu! Band Geeks This episode is possibly the most widely recognized episode of Spongebob. It even got memed at the Super Bowl in 2019, and to this day, there is still an active change.org petition with over a million signatures requesting the song featured in this episode to be played at the Super Bowl. This season 2 episode begins with Squidward playing his clarinet badly, as he usually does. Yeah, uh, we're with the pet hospital down the street, and I understand you have a dying animal on the premises. Squidward's phone rings, and it's his school rival, Squilliam Fancy Son, calling to let Squidward know that he is living Squidward's dream, and that his band is scheduled to play the Bubble Bowl, but he isn't going to be able to make it, so instead, he asks Squidward if his band can play instead, probably expecting Squidward to say no because he doesn't have a band. But Squidward insists that he does have a band, and that they are are gonna play the bubble bowl. Squidward puts up signs all over town to recruit people to be part of his marching band. The turnout is actually pretty impressive as a ton of Bikini Bottom residents show up to be part of the band. Sadly, no one actually has any experience playing any instruments. Is mayonnaise an instrument? No, Patrick, mayonnaise is not an instrument. Squidward decides to teach everyone, which doesn't exactly go as planned. They start with attempting to play a simple ascending scale, which ends badly for Squidward. Then they attempt to practice stepping in rhythm, which ends badly for Patrick, who mistakes stepping in rhythm for kicking. Kicking? I want to do some kicking! Why you? Why you? Whoever's the owner of the white sedan? You left your lights on. By the fourth day of practicing, the band hasn't made any progress whatsoever. Tensions start to get rather high, which causes the group to break out in a massive fight. Well, maybe we wouldn't sound so bad if some people didn't try to play with big meaty claws. 
What did you say, punk? The fight gets pretty gnarly, but the second that class is over, everyone makes friendly and gets ready to leave. Squidward pours his heart out in front of everyone, heartbroken that his dreams have been crushed. SpongeBob rallies everyone together to practice and get their act together. So if we all could just pretend that Squidward was a fireman or some guy in an ambulance, then I'm sure we could all pull together and discover what it truly means to be in a marching band. Yeah, for the firemen! Yeah! The next day, Squidward shows up to the Bubble Bowl, and it turns out Squilliam lied, and he is actually able to make it. Squidward showed up just to let everyone know that his band won't be making it to perform, but then his band shows up unexpectedly, of course Squidward not knowing that they had spent all night preparing for this exact moment. They go up to perform, and Squidward is sweating buckets. Meanwhile, Squilliam is grinning eagerly as they're both anticipating the band to be absolutely terrible. Much to their surprise, the band competently performs a song that the entire world wishes would become a stadium rock anthem with the likes of Eye of the Tiger or The Final Countdown. This moment was an interesting one in Spongebob history. Squidward, being the asshole that he is, was rarely a character that anyone really wanted to see succeed. But the ending of this episode, seeing Squidward thriving like this, really just hits differently and makes me appreciate him as a character a lot more. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, then thank you so much for watching. If you're already subscribed, thank you very much for your support. Words can't explain how much I appreciate you. If you liked this video, click that like button. And if you're not subscribed yet, then subscribe for more videos like this one. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.